Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Black Dragon RPG. My name, of course, is John, and today we are going to be taking a look at Mirkborg, the doom metal, doom metal album of a game. A spiked flail to the face, rules light, heavy everything else. This game, pretty epic. Uh, this is, of course, in the OSR, and it's... It's very artistic. We're going to take a look at the PDF because I bought the PDF. Uh, that way I didn't have to do the whole top-down view of the book kind of deal. Um, but yeah, let's jump right into it. Uh, so this is the PDF of the book. Um, so, like I said, I obviously bought a copy. I have several copies, actually, um, for my players and stuff. Uh, but I also wanted to pick it up from DriveThruRPG. If you want to grab a copy of the PDF, please use my link below. I don't often plug uh, the fact that I have a DriveThruRPG affiliate link uh, because I figure if you notice it in the description, you notice it. Um, but I am going to in this instance. If you use it, I get a little kickback from them, um, you know, which go can go towards like it's just store credit basically, so I would just use it to then buy other RPGs to review for the channel. So I would appreciate it if you do pick this up on uh, PDF. Please use my link. <laughs> All right, uh, enough of that. So I love the cover of this book so much. Let me see. Maybe I should shrink this down just a little bit so you can take it all in. I think this book is incredibly unique, the layout and design of it. Um, so, anyways, that's just me. I love it. All right, let's 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 get into this. So, one of the things I like, I'm going to pop back in here for just a second, just so I can show you. One of the things that I like about the book is that there is no wasted space. You open the cover, and right on the back uh, of the board cover, there is useful information. I hate it when you open a, a tabletop RPG, and this is just blank, like just black or white pages that are just useless. Nothing is wasted space in this book. Everything is useful, and I appreciate that. All right. So... A lot of this um, is random uh, roll, you know, roll charts. So you've got names, uh, you know, that you can roll up. Uh, you got D10 occult treasures. I think this is just really cool. I mean, a lot of this stuff, look, an ash gray ring, a finger width wide, all that passes through it. Uh, all it passes through is obliterated. I just, <laughs> I think you could do a lot of creative stuff with that. Um, you've got traps. You've got weather. And I, I really appreciate how many times are you DMing and you feel like you're just saying the same thing over and over again as far as uh, being descriptive. Um, because in the heat of the moment, you just get that brain fog. I know it happens to me sometimes. You know, it's like, oh, your players are like, describe what we see. And you're just like, oh, it's uh, dark and stormy. But when you've got this chart, I wouldn't even roll. I'll, I'll, like, I'll just pick stuff out of here based on, on what's going on. So, you know, a soup thick mist. When you describe fog like that, you can like legitimately feel it soup thick. Like, you know, instantly how that would feel walking through it. Uh, an irritating drizzle. How many times have you been walking outside when it's just lightly raining and yeah, it, there, it can be an irritating drizzle. Like I just, instead of just describing it as, Oh, it's kind of misty raining out. Yeah. Irritating drizzle hits your skin. I just, I love the fact that that kind of stuff is in here. 
uh, corpse plundering. So this is really cool. It's a, a nice chart of like stuff that you could, uh, you know, a scalp with long black hair, just things you can find that uh, are just interesting that you could totally work into your story. Map to a weak but wealthy family's house. So maybe your players are like, hmm, maybe we could use that information. <laughs> I don't know. I just think this game is pretty freaking awesome. Let's see. Let's keep going here. So here is some of the play testers, not some, all. So that's who did the play testing, proofreading and editing, the original translation, and then the thanks. Now, this is really cool. Um, it tells you what type of paper it's printed on uh, and that there's over a hundred different typefaces. So I just think that's interesting. You don't really see that very often in uh, books, in RPG books. I just think it's interesting. And then you've got this. I love this. Music that helped. So this is all the music that they were listening to when they uh, were creating this game. And I highly suggest you go check out these bands because a lot of them are just phenomenal. Seriously. Um... Yeah, I really love the fact that they did this. And if you go to Spotify, uh, you can find playlists that people have created with all of this stuff in it, which is helpful. Uh, and actually, I think the official creators have their own Mirkborg playlist. Uh, yeah, more credits. Uh, there's the English writing and creative consultation that's patrick stewart that i was telling you about more fantastic art look at this cathedral stunning and then you get stuff like this i mean i'm not going to obviously read you the entire book but i just wanted to give you an example of what the book looks like you get these uh what was written must be known. I don't know. I When you're flipping through the actual physical book, it's just so striking. I, I don't even know if the PDF does it justice, but anyways, it goes into kind of the history of the world, talks about the two-headed bas basilisk uh, that is kind of the god figure in this world, uh, known as she and he. Look at that art, just really awesome. So it kind of sets everything up for you. And then look at this super abstract map. I love how abstract it is. It's not completely set in stone. It's like a suggestion almost. It, it invites the DM to make the world his own. It gives you a rough outline. Some people hate that, I realize. Some people want everything spelled out for them. Um, but, you know, sometimes I do enjoy that, and I, sometimes I love a lot of detail. I love uh, Pathfinder. They, they do a good job of giving you tons and tons of lore. I mean, you could look up any random location on the Pathfinder uh, map, the Galarian map, and you could probably find an entire book dedicated to that one location. But sometimes, as far as creativity goes, um, sometimes this is nice. Like, here's the here's the bare bones, and you tell us what Galgenbeck really is. You flesh it out. What is the Valley of the Unfortunate Undead? Like, I just love that it's not super specific. Um, it gives you a little bit, just enough to, um, just enough to get you going. And that's what I like about this, this game. 
So let's flip through more. Look at that artwork. Not for everyone, but uh, certainly an aesthetic that I enjoy, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, my group also really enjoys this kind of uh, artistic approach to gaming. I love that piece. Pretty much everything in here is, is awesome, in my opinion. So then you've got these, what they call miseries. They're basically seven psalms that you can roll randomly um, to see if any of these happen. When you get to the seventh psalm, the, the world ends. So there is a time crunch. There's a feeling of hopelessness and despair in this game. And I, I like that. Sometimes it is really nice to play a game where the players aren't just these superheroes that are going from one quest to another and you know they're going to win because they're just so overpowered. In this game, the world is crap. Like you, There's no surviving it. It's just how long can you survive uh, until the end. And I love that. So you get here, I like this idea too, rolling for, uh, you know, your equipment. So first you would roll a d6. Sometimes you can end up with nothing. Then you roll your d12. Maybe you get a four. You just have a magnesium strip in your pocket. And then you roll a d12 and there you go. You have exquisite perfume worth 25 silver. So you might have just a pocket with a magnesium strip in it and a little bottle of perfume that maybe you found and you can sell later. It's literally, you know, you don't start off with uh, hundreds of dollars worth of, of gold and silver. It is what it is. Good thing I'm not using my camera right now because for some reason it keeps turning itself off and that is super annoying. All right. Uh, here is all the character creation stuff. First, oh, first there's weapons, of course. And this is really awesome. A femur does D4 damage. And that's a whole page. A whole page dedicated to a femur. It does D4 damage. Some people would be annoyed with that. <laughs> I've heard, I've actually heard it. Some people are like, why would you waste... A whole page on one item. Well, you know, it's an artistic choice and I'm totally down for it. Like, to me, this is awesome. And I love the way that they show off the rest of the weapons. <laughs> so you get this poor guy here that has just been brutalized, but it tells you what every weapon uh, does. <laughs> so... I think that's a very creative way. Uh, instead of just a nice organized little chart, you get this artwork that I think is just freaking awesome. <laughs> Again, not for everyone. Uh, there's your flail to the face. If you actually took a flail to the face, it would do D8 damage. Very cool art. And then you've got... Uh, Armor, very simple and straightforward. And here is the rest of the equipment that you would be able to uh, buy, sell, or barter with. Here is a quick page on abilities, how to roll up your stats, and your hit points. There's that human heart. Um, but yeah, not gonna lie, you're pretty weak in this game. You're not a superhero. You don't start off with 30 hit points. <laughs> uh, this is a brutal game and one hit could kill you. 
So don't get too attached to your character. Sometimes that's nice because it gives a sense of urgency to the game. You know that you're not invincible, so you might play things a little safer. You might get more creative instead of charging in and just killing all the goblins. You, you might have to take your time and figure out a different approach. So, very awesome. That's how rest works. Reaction, morale. Morale is an important part of this game. Powers. So this would be kind of like uh, magic, I guess. But they are divided by unclean scrolls and sacred scrolls. So you definitely have two different feels uh, for this type of thing. So kind of flavors your character a little bit. Are you more into the darker stuff or are you more of a good person? <laughs> uh, I like stuff like this. Whisper, whispers pass the gate. Ask three questions to a deceased creature. You could come up with some pretty interesting scenarios with just that one uh, spell, that one scroll. A lot of uh, random tables in this book for you to roll on. Here's uh, some omens. And then this is optional. Uh, you can roll some terrible traits for yourself. Are you endlessly aggravated? Are you worried? Are you a biter? <laughs> uh, I think that this helps flesh out your character. It can really, um, in my opinion, it can help a player's creativity. Now, you know, obviously D&D &D has this kind of stuff and Pathfinder has this kind of stuff, but uh, it's usually positive stuff. These are terrible traits. Like, what are your flaws? And I know there's a little... Here's my experience at the table. There is a section on the 5e character sheet that says flaws. Uh, you know, when my players are creating their characters... They write something in there, uh, but they never play it. They never play it. Unless I make them, you know, I encourage my players, if you play your character well, you are rewarded. And so I think the terrible traits, really awesome. Broken bodies. Um, so yeah, you might have a rotting face. You might wear a mask constantly. Like, what's that like? <laughs> what, what, what is it like uh, to have lost three toes and you have a limp, and so now you have to try to survive in this world already at a disadvantage? To me, that's interesting. That can be super interesting for your player's creativity in how they play their character. I had someone one time roll this one, a red swollen alcoholic's nose. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's just interesting stuff. Uh, so he played his character as an alcoholic and he made sure that his character became very irritable if he couldn't find his next drink. That caused a lot of strife between the players and it was interesting. It was seriously interesting. The, uh, all of these are cool, too. Look, you obsessively collect small, sharp stones. Well, why, why do you do that? I don't know. Think of a reason why. You can't stop drinking once you start. That goes along pretty well with the red alcoholic nose. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of this stuff. Man, you can get super creative with how you play your character. Uh, and then here is just some ideas to get you started.
Oh, th this is cool. These are uh, arcane catastrophes. Uh, so you roll a d20. Uh, and then I, I like stuff like this. One by one, your teeth fall out. Long, brittle fingernails replace them in your gums. Your smile is horrific, and you find it hard to eat. How is that going to affect your interactions with NPCs? How is that going to affect your nutrition uh, and your strength? Every one of these <laughs> makes you think, how is this going to affect me? Makes the DM think, uh, you know, how is this going to affect the players? Leads to more creativity is my point. And then you've got some classes. The Fanged Deserter. Everything you need to know on two pages. Gutterborn Scum. Everything you need to know. Well, I'll offer that one pretty much one page because the other page is the artwork. So you get, you know, I'm going to try to get through these a little faster. I'm not sure where we are on time. I don't want to obviously take too long in this video. I just love talking about this book, though. Um, man, the art is just incredible. I know I keep saying that. Okay, here's Creatures. So this is Seth, the goblin. <laughs> here's just a little bit about goblins in this world and i like how it tells you what its head is worth how much it's worth if it's captured alive and how much it's worth if it's dead this adds another element to the game pretty much uh, like monster hunting the players might as well make a little cash for uh their efforts and Here's okay, so here's a goblin in any other game, you would just kill him and move on. But if if a captured goblin is worth 150 silver, you might your players might approach it different, you know? So you've got a nice little variety of creatures. And, of course, the community has created many more. So don't think you're limited to just these. But also, take inspiration from some of this and create your own. I mean, you see how creative these are. So maybe invent some of your own stuff. That's just creepy. Love it. Let's get through these to the next section this is a like a metallic y kind of piece in the in the actual physical book and then you get uh the shadow king's lost heir so in the back of the book you do get an adventure and it's very well laid out um so there's the map, and it goes piece by piece. The entrance, the dining hall, and in the corner up here, it's grayed out. Every piece covered in, on this page, so there's number one is the entrance. There's the entrance grayed out. Number two is the dining hall, grayed out. So you, you always know where you're at. Um, and I like how it describes... It, it gives you a way to describe the room. Just a small little description, and then you can expand on, on how you describe that. So the dining hall is warm and bright, rotten smell, faint, sad violin music from the north. You can expand on this and really create an imaginative scene in your player's mind. It's all about how much work um, you want to put into it as a DM. Because you could just read this, uh, I prefer to expand on this and really put my players in that setting, in that that atmosphere. So, a nice adventure to start you off. Fantastic art to go along with it. Um... 
and then here's some adventure sparks d100 just kind of gives you some ideas to get you going and of course the end of the the book has a lot of a lot of little random tables so and then it's got an index for easy reference especially for creatures and powers and stuff and then there is the back cover and that was Mirkborg. so let me know in the comments what you guys think uh, is this something that you and your table would play I know it's probably not for everyone it is kind of a divisive book some people uh, just absolutely can't stand it but there's a ton of people who absolutely love it it's got a huge uh, community behind it um, they are very generous with their third-party creators so it's very easy to make stuff and get it published for Mirkborg. so I think that's pretty cool that the creators are on board with people just doing their own thing with the uh, setting and stuff and yeah I want to know your thoughts so leave them down in the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed my content, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.